How solar panels are made Solar energy as a source of renewable energy has never been a hotter or more significant topic of debate than it is now. Many governments, industries, enterprises and individuals worldwide have begun to recognize the need for more renewable energy. In today's video, we'll cover all you need to know about solar energy and how to save it with solar panels. Watch the video till the end to find the answers to all your solar panel related queries. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified every time we upload a new video. Now, let's begin. Today, the world continues to rely significantly on fossil fuels, even subsidizing them. Meanwhile, pollution they produce has hit new highs, ranging from climate damaging greenhouse gases to health endangering particulates. Solar energy, on the other hand, uses the sun to generate pure, clean and renewable energy, making it an excellent alternative to fossil fuels like natural gas and coal. It also helps to minimize global carbon emissions and greenhouse gas emissions. Finally, once the solar panels are in place, power production will be emission-free and require only a small bit of water. The value of solar energy cannot be overstated. Going solar has a significant return on investment, not just momentarily, but also in terms of public health and environmental sustainability. So, how do you turn sunlight into electricity? Well, via a solar panel. What forms a solar panel? A solar panel is made up of several solar cells. A vast number of little solar cells spread out over a large area can combine to provide enough electricity to be useful. The more light that strikes a cell, the more power it produces. This is why spacecraft are typically designed with solar panels that can always be oriented at the sun, even as the rest of the spaceship moves around. Raw Materials for Solar Panels Pure silicon is the primary and most important component in the production of solar cells. Silicon, though, is not pure in its native state. It is made from quartz sand in a furnace that operates at extremely high temperatures. Pure silicon is made primarily from natural beach sand. Though silicon is a plentiful resource on the planet, the process of extracting pure silicon is costly and energy intensive. Manufacturing of Solar Panels The initial step in the production of solar panels is to separate silicon from quartz sand. After being refined, silicon is collected in solid rocks. After that, the rocks are melted together to create cylindrical ingots. To obtain the necessary shape, a steel and cylindrical furnace is used. When manufacturing begins, great care is taken to ensure that all atoms are aligned in the correct orientation and structure. Boron is used in the procedure to give silicon positive electrical polarity. A single silicon crystal is used by the manufacturer to create monocrystalline cells. As a result, these solar panels are extremely efficient. They do, however, come at a premium price. Polycrystalline cells are made by melting together multiple silicon crystals. The numerous silicon crystals give these panels a shattered glass effect. The created ingot is shined and polished once it cools to leave smooth surfaces. Wafer making After creating ingots, this is the next phase in the solar panel production process. The cylindrical ingot is finally split into tiny disks to generate wafers. Using a cylindrical saw, it is done one at a time. A multi-wire saw can also be used to cut many wires at once. Silicon is a lustrous material that reflects light. The disks are coated with a thin anti-reflective coating, which reduces the quantity of sunlight lost. Titanium dioxide and silicon oxide are often employed in anti-reflective coatings, but other materials can also be used. This coating substance can either be heated until the molecules boil or spattered. The makers utilize a high voltage to know the material's molecules and deposit them on the silicon during the spattering procedure. Saw marks can be removed by polishing the wafers more. Some manufacturers, however, choose to forego these procedures because the saw marks aid in efficiency. Developing Solar Cells To turn silicon wafers into usable solar cells, manufacturers go through a series of procedures. Each wafer is treated and has metal conductors added to the surface. The additional conductors give the surface a grid-like matrix appearance. They make certain that sunshine is turned into electricity. 
The silicon wafer's covering lowers solar reflection, allowing more light to be absorbed and hence increased production. The manufacturer's phosphorus is distributed in a thin coating over the wafer's surface in oven-like chambers. The phosphorus creates a negative electrical charge on the wafers. From solar cells to solar panels. The solar cells are then connected using metal connector. Solar panels are made up of solar cells that are arranged in a matrix-like pattern. The following are the market standards for solar panels. Panels with 48 cells are appropriate for small residential roofs. 60 cell panels are the most common size. Panels with 72 cells are ideal for large-scale installations. After the solar cells are assembled, a thin glass shell is added on the side facing the sun. The back sheet is also made of an extremely durable polymer-based substance. This keeps things like water, soil and other contaminants out of the solar cells. A junction box is added to allow connections to the modules. The manufacturer then inserts the frame, which provides further protection to the cells. To keep things together, ethylene vinyl acetate, or EVA, is employed. Testing a solar panel After the solar module has been manufactured, it is tested to ensure that it performs as planned. Solar panels are cleaned and examined after testing, and the model is then supplied to homes. The efficiency of solar panels continues to improve. The solar manufacturing industry is predicted to develop as more people choose renewable energy for their homes and businesses. As research and development continues, it is hoped that solar manufacturing costs will continue to fall. How does a solar panel produce energy? Solar panels generate direct current electricity by collecting photons from the sun. When photons strike the panel's semiconducting silicon material, they are absorbed. Electrons break from atoms and migrate through the solar cell during this process. Direct current electricity is created by the movement of electrons. The DC electricity is then transformed to alternating current electricity via the system inverter. AC is the type of electricity required to power the property. Four factors affecting solar energy production. During and after the installation of the residential solar system, homeowners should consider four important issues. 1. Shade. Solar panels in the shade will not produce as much energy as those in the sunshine. Solar may not be the greatest option if your roof is shaded by untrimmable trees or structures. 2. Season. Solar energy production fluctuates from day to day and month to month. Just like the weather, a cloudy winter day will not produce as much as a beautiful summer day. However, it is critical to consider the big picture throughout the course of the year. Snow, for example, can reflect light and boost the PV performance. A chilly month will only be a solar adversary if the panels are covered in slush. 3. Tilt Solar panels, unlike pinball machines, can benefit from proper tilting. The orientation of your home, its location and even the slope of your roof all have an impact on how well a domesticated solar system operates. Solar panels should ideally be installed at the same angles as the latitude where they will be used. In the most situations, pitches ranging from 30 to 45 degrees work effectively. 4. Azimuth The compass direction from which the sunlight is coming is the solar azimuth angle in the northern hemisphere. The sun shines from the south at noon, while in the southern hemisphere the sun shines from the north. A solar home panel's energy output could be reduced by up to 35% if the azimuth angle is incorrect. The optimal choice is usually an azimuth of zero, facing the equator. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please hit the like button and share the video. We will see you in our next video. Till then, take care.